This is the Petrochemical Corridor, an 85-mile stretch of land along the Mississippi River that is home to more than 150 industrial plants that produce stuff like rubber, asphalt, and refined oil. But the people who live here have another name for it. The Chemical Corridor, commonly known as Cancer Alley. In this part of Louisiana, Cancer has seemed to touch everyone's lives. I have a hundred people in a meeting. Has anybody in the room had anybody in their house die of cancer? Everybody stand up. Someone just passed away three houses down from cancer. Because I had one friend, I went visit her on 4th Street on a Friday. And that Monday morning I got up, I said, I'm going to go see Mary Alice. I got a call, she was dead. She died of cancer. She had three other sisters. She had two brothers that died with cancer. I'm trying to think who I know that died that didn't die from cancer since I moved back here. Now this, visited towns along the Mississippi River with Senator Cory Booker, who is proposing legislation regarding environmental justice to find out exactly what life is like in America's cancer alley. Cancer Alley is littered with fence line communities, neighborhoods, and subdivisions that run right up next to petrochemical facilities. In Louisiana, we have a minimum standoff, which is like 500 feet between a plant, an oil well, and your front door. That's how close they can be. Martha Huckabee and Betty Bickham live in one such fence line community in St. Rose, just blocks over from a thousand acre international Matex tanks terminal plant. And they're right here and there's no buffer. There needs to be a buffer. They should be mi miles away, you know? But this is just too close to somebody's yard. Unfortunately, this is where our house is. So in, in a sense, you are trapped because you can't pick your house up and move it somewhere else. They say they both felt the effects of a 10-day-long hydrogen sulfide release from a shell asphalt plant in 2014. That smell lasted for like a few, 36, like, I don't know the exact amount of time, but it was more than a day. And we had to bring the kids inside because it wasn't going away. Tests performed by the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality at the time found levels of hydrogen sulfide to be high, either at or exceeding the levels the EPA says could cause harm. But I was having headaches, which I don't get. And within a week, Dawson was out in the driveway vomiting white foam out of his mouth. It had my mind where I couldn't function. I was having very dizzy spells and my ears were ringing and nausea and my husband wasn't feeling well. We just were not feeling well. So it, it was bad. You was nauseated, vomiting. My grandchildren, they were sick and we couldn't figure, we just thought it was a stomach virus. Nobody knew what was going on. I couldn't put it together and I got a knock on the door and that's how I figured it out. Uh, Ann from the Bucket Brigade had somebody knock on my door and explain to me what had happened. Louisiana Bucket Brigade is just one of many environmental activist organizations in the area. They say their mission is to create and inform healthy society that hastens the transition from fossil fuels. The groups have formed an alliance under the name Green Army, led by former Lieutenant General Russell Honore. 37 years, three months, and three days I served in the Army, and I served as a commander. I commanded everything from a platoon to an Army. Honore gained national attention for leading Joint Task Force Katrina. And I had never seen such destruction before other than pictures from World War II. And that's what it kind of reminds you of. The coast of Mississippi was absolutely destroyed. He now helps lead the Green Army the fight for environmental justice in Louisiana. The group says that by combining forces between local and national groups in the area, 
they can make a bigger impact. What we do is fight pollution. We are advocacy for clean air, clean water, and clean land, and protect the health of our people. That's what we do. But activists from all over say that taking on Louisiana's government and some of the biggest industries in the country is hard work. You know, Kennedy said the world just isn't fair, but here it's not just not fair, it's crooked and it's corrupt because Big Oil has, has hijacked our democracy in Louisiana. Our government stands more with these companies that put money into their pockets. So because these companies back up the government, our government don't back up us. Well, we got all the energy in the world and this is what it looked like. We're the second poorest state because they've hijacked the democracy because they keep getting exceptions and exemptions to the Clean Air and the Clean Water Act. It's just big oil. It's just crooked and it's all about money and they don't care about people. That's, yeah, they don't care about people. Uh, yeah, or clean air. They just care about, you know, lining their pockets. How many companies in America get that kind of break? And they complain about some poor kid getting a free breakfast at school? They complain about some mother trying to take her kid to the doctor? and she don't have the money to pay for a deductible, and that's what they're complaining about? Bullshit. This ain't the America I fought for. This is not right. This is not right. Another problem with holding petrochemical companies and their emissions accountable for cancer is bureaucratic holdups. If you wanted to know what was the cancer rate in this area code, you couldn't find out. Why? Because the Louisiana Tumor Registry treat that like secret information to be able to release that data. But they will not release data in any population less than 16,000 people. Well, over half our parishes don't have 16,000 people in it. For example, the population is just 8,122 in St. Rose, where Betty and Martha live. And there is no end to tribal data for the effects of living along the petrochemical corridor. Let me tell you this, the data show about one or five of us are going to die from cancer. I go by tribal data. I have a hundred people in a meeting. Has anybody in the room had anybody in their house die of cancer? Everybody stand up. Clearly a case where tribal data don't match what? Actually, because actual data is manipulated. I believe the people. I would not believe the government data. The CDC is a bunch of shit. People shared their experiences living in the area with Senator Booker at a local town hall. They talked about cancer, asthma, even their face burning from just stepping outside. Three months ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Women tell me that they have miscarriages, stillbirths, problems with their skin, rashes vomiting, um, lots of cancer, respiratory problems, asthma increases in children here, the adult onset of asthma increases here. So there's a, not just cancer, there's a lot of quality of life issues that affects the communities. Residents and activists are tired of talking points. Phrases like, the plants bring jobs or bring money into the area. They say money isn't enough to buy their health back. If uh, ISIS showed up, and they said they would create jobs, would we let them in? And even bringing jobs, what's the difference with you bringing jobs when you're killing us with our help? There are a lot of thoughts on how to remedy the problem. Some Cancer Alley residents are pushing for companies to buy them out so they can leave. Others want to rein in emission levels or prevent companies from expanding further. In St. Rose, the residents know fighting back against these companies is hard, but they are starting small by trying to get emission readings from local plants. We just want them to be good neighbors and we want them to be held accountable and do the right thing. Well, we want those monitors, first of all, because it's not about money. It's about getting good, clean, quality air so we can have a good quality of life for our kids. I mean, we're of our age now. Still, even with the community coming together, 
life in Cancer Alley is filled with challenging moments and tough decisions. But I'm not sure if I want to stick around for that. It's not that I'm running away from a fight, but at the same time, my family and our health is a little more important to me. If, I can't, if I'm not, if something's not happening here, see, fortunately, I can do that. Some of these people can't. People can't afford to move. My house is paid for. So where am I going to go? I'm 61 years old. I'm unemployed. So where do I want to start all over paying a house note, paying insurance? I can't afford it. So we got, I don't, you know, I don't know if we can ever win this battle. It's a, a hard one. But we just keep on doing what we're doing and fight back. You do the right thing, you, you, gotta, you gotta win if you're doing the right thing. <laughs>